trouble. Why would I be in any trouble? Well, you guys back from Vietnam, you get kind of restless, you know? Well, take it easy. Where are you headed? Up to Dr. Wells, he said it's okay with you. No, no, just checking. Hey, do me a favor, will you, Phil? Keep off my back. Sure thing. Well, I'm doing the doctors at four. That shouldn't take too long. Something really wrong with you, is there? No. You know, doctors, they're not happy unless they're making their little tests. Dr. Wellesley's a really fine doctor, isn't he? Quite a ladies' man, too, I'm told. Hmm. Well, he's not my style. Right here. Dr. Wellesley's office. Oh, yes. Well, how about um, two on Monday? Fine, thank you. So, when do you start back to college? Oh, uh, as soon as Dr. Wellesley squares me away. By the way, Fred, I've been meaning to ask you, what do you tell people you're coming here for? Oh, I'd just say I have an allergy. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> we had one fellow who used to tell people it was for acne. <laughs> acne? That's more humiliating than what I have. Dr. Wellesley's office. No, I'm sorry. He's still out making house calls. I'm so glad you could get away. Darling, Frank's in your waiting room. Right I had now. to see you. I just had to see you. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Mm. I've got a nurse who's supposed to chaperone me with my female patients, but here I am. Here you are involved with one. Not as involved as I'd like to be. Lisa, mm -hmm. you will speak to Frank again, won't you? Won't do any good. He says no divorce. Well, have you tried offering him money? Stacks of it. You know, the trouble with Frank is that he's really a nice guy. All he wants to do is get along with me. Yes, but I want you, Lisa. I want you now. Not when Frank gets ready to release you. Well, Dr. Wells will fix you up if anybody can. Though, to tell you the truth, I don't trust any of them. Doctors? Not a one. Well, I have a lot of confidence in Dr. Wellesley. You know, Frank said something odd the other night. What was that? Well, he said that you didn't inherit your father's practice, that you had to buy it from the estate. Yes. Matter of fact, that's true. It is. Well, my father wanted me to go into his practice right away with him, and I had a few things I had to get out of my system first. Yeah, I remember that. They say you can get a lot out of your system as a ship's doctor. It had its moments. Then after I got married, and my wife wanted me to set up practice in her hometown. My father took it as kind of a personal rejection. He never knew her, did he? No, it might have been different if he had. But then she died, and he died. Poor baby. I've got to get back. All right. That should hold you for another day. Thanks. I know I say that a lot, but I really mean it. Thanks. Hmm? Oh, sure, sure, right. Most of the guys that pick the habit up in Nam have to go cold turkey. I mean, if they go at all. I really don't think I could take that, you know? I'm glad to help. Tomorrow, same time, then? 
Yeah, sure. Hey, listen, uh, I don't mean to bend your ear. I mean, I, I guess you got plenty on your mind without me. I suppose you could say that, Fred. Well, take it easy. Mm -hmm. Must be quite a markup on x-rays, Ron. You take so many of them. Only fair. Real profit is in imaginary ailments. One of our best sellers. Yeah. I'll bet. All right, Frank, I'll phone you when we get the results of your tests. Right. Oh, by the way, I, uh, I took a business trip a couple of weeks ago to Jaegerstown. Jaegerstown? Mm-hmm. How long were you in practice back then? Oh, about five years. That's right. Five years. Yes, you're well remembered back in Jaegerstown. Glad you came, Frank. Oh, I'm glad to be here. You think Fred Kramer will be all right? He's hitting it pretty hard. No, I think he deserves a little fun. Lisa. Ron, I spoke to Frank. You'd better know we're going away. Going away? Europe for a few months. It's a common prescription for couples giving it another chance. What about us? Darling, it's because of us. We just have to stop. We haven't done anything. We would. We will. How did his test come out anyway? Oh, he's fine. He has a small cyst on his shoulder I'll have to remove. That's just a minor office procedure. Couldn't manage to lose him on the operating table, could you? That's nothing to joke about. No, of course not. Ron, I'm sorry about everything. Excuse me. Timed it better. <laughs> Having a good time? Yes, it's just fine. Good. Oh, thank you, Frank. Cheers. Cheers. She dances well, didn't she? Lisa? Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I suppose so. You know, Ron, I, uh, I did something recently of which I'm not particularly proud. Oh, what was that? I hired a private detective. You did? What for? I knew Lisa was interested in another man. Phil Proctor? I'm talking about you, Ron. Now, please, don't bother to confirm or deny it. I also had you checked out pretty thoroughly back in Jaegerstown. What for? Well, I was curious. I wanted to know more about certain stories I'd heard about you and those strange deaths. I had to see this Dr. Waterbury while I was out in Jaegerstown. It was a bad break for you, really. Waterbury, eh? Not one of my biggest boosters. He said the people out there are pretty well convinced you were involved in both deaths, the mother-in-law and the wife, one after the other. In fact, the word he used was uh, murdered. Makes quite a story, doesn't it? I thought so. There isn't a single word of truth in it. Never was a shred of evidence. Not enough to bring you to court, apparently, enough to drive you out of town. Did Waterbury happen to tell you what this whole affair was based on? 
The awful fact that my mother-in-law died of a heart attack one year and Helen died of the same cause the next. They wondered why you signed both death certificates yourself. It's not unusual. And why the quick cremations? It's what they wanted. Frank, if you check this out, you must know that the charges came from a cousin of Helen's who hoped to inherit their money. Yes, but the money did come to you, didn't it? Mother to daughter to you. They assume that was the motive. You watch much television, Ron? No, not much. Why? Well, I guess the only thing I ever learned from it was the meaning of M.O. M.O.? Mm-hmm. Method of operation. Cop talk. The criminal's tendency to repeat a successful method. First, there was Carol Hansen, wasn't there? Your detective was pretty thorough, wasn't he? It is possible, isn't it, to imitate heart attack symptoms with certain drugs, like insulin. Carol Hansen died of a sudden heart attack, too. And you signed that death certificate. She was a stewardess, I was the ship's doctor. She was carrying your child, wasn't she? Could have been mine. I told them that at the time. Things do happen to your women, don't they? But, Frank, I'm sick of defending myself against baseless charges. Now, you believe what you like, I couldn't care less. Now, that was the first false note. You were very good till then. How long do you think you'd last here in Woodfield if I were to spread this story around? Is that what you intend to do? I haven't told anyone yet. I don't see any reason why you'd want to. I don't, really. Well, then what's this all about? I can't imagine that I enjoy going through this old witch hunt all over again. The fact is, Ron, I'm... Uh... I'm hoping for an accommodation with you. An accommodation? Mm-hmm. I'm hoping I can persuade you not to murder me. You're not serious, are you? I thought I was. For heaven's sakes, why would I want to kill you? Because I'm like the others. I'm in your way. You're not serious. Why would you keep coming to me as a patient if you thought I was going to kill you? Oh, I was safe enough as long as you thought there might be a divorce. But you know better now. You decided how I intend to do it? Like the others. I think I'm a candidate for a heart attack. You said as much yourself. I told you there was no immediate cause for worry. I worried. I went to a heart specialist and had another EKG. There's nothing wrong with my heart. I hope he's right. You know, Frank, EKGs don't read as simply as market reports. Different men often get different readings. Mm-hmm. I was sure there'd be some medical cop-out. There usually is. It's the strength of our profession. I know I could be wrong about you, Ron. Well, that's the first nice thing you've said to me all day. I realize it's been innocent with you and Lisa so far, but I can't allow this to go on. The only thing that makes sense is for you to go. Go? Where? Anywhere. Away from Waterfield. Oh, come on, Frank. You'll be gone by the time Lisa and I get back from Europe, or I'll spread the word about your colorful past and drive you out of town. You'd do that, too, wouldn't you? Believe me, Doctor. Right or wrong, I won't roll over and play dead for you. I suppose that means that now you won't want me to take care of that cyst for you. I'd have to have it done anyway. Might seem peculiar if I were to suddenly change doctors. But I should tell you I've taken certain precautions. Your detective? No, oh, no. I paid him off. He gave me all I need. Look, Frank, how do I get through to you? I'm a doctor. I don't deliberately kill people. Hey, Ron, you got an emergency. 
Hospital sent me to get you. Come on, we'll have better time in my car. All right, Phil. Thanks for the game, Frank. I enjoyed every minute of it. <laughs> Doctor's lounge and have a cup of coffee, and I'll meet you there. Sure, I'll wait for you. Regis, what time is Fred Kramer coming in for his treatment today? Good. Miss Regis, it's important that we get another test on Mr. Manning. The lab needs it. Have him come in this afternoon. We'll remove the cyst at the same time. Ah, better now. I've never quite gotten used to losing a patient. You're a good doctor. Yes, I suppose so, but it's hard not to feel that if I'd done my job a little bit better, that... <clears throat> not as if I'd done it deliberately. Why would you have done that? Did she leave you any money or anything? Not that I know of. Is that a serious question? Remember Dr. Adams, the British doctor? They had him up for knocking off some of his patients just because they happened to remember him in their wills. But the jury found him innocent. You're not suggesting there's any connection, are you? No, no, I just got homicide on the brain. It's this course I'm taking, you know, the one uh, for the exam for captain. <laughs> yes, I was supposed to lend you a book on forensic medicine, wasn't I? Yeah, a lot of doctors have been murderers. You'd be surprised how big they've been in the field. One of the great traditions. Dr. Crippen, Dr. Palmer, Dr. Clements. Giants. I guess it's because it'd be so easy for a doctor, huh? You know, our instructor said an interesting thing once. He said, homicidal types like that, you've got to think of them like they're a loaded revolver just waiting to be pointed at somebody. Cheerful thought. Phil, you've made my day. <laughs> well, at least you got your mind off of things, right? Right through here, Mr. Manning, please. If you'll just remove your shirt, you can wait here. I hope he won't keep me waiting too long. Look, Mr. Manning, either the patient waits for him or he waits for the patient. Whose time is more valuable? Some of his patients do important work, too, you know. But dollar for dollar, I mean. Oh, I see what you mean, yes. In the healing arts, time is money. You're very funny. But we take an oath. Cheer up the sick and dying. Well, there goes another one. Another what? Another patient. He howls every time we lose one. Your dog does? It's spooky how he knows. Doesn't do it very often, does he? Oh, well, now and then. Well, listen, you can't win them all. Now, Happy, you quiet down. Stop it, quiet down. Now, Happy, you quiet down in there now. Be quiet. Oh, Doctor, Mr. Manning's waiting for you in the treatment room. 
Fred Crane will be here any moment. Thanks. Lieutenant? Thank you, Miss Regis. Uh, Miss Regis, will you go quiet your dog? And I don't want to hear how happy he can always tell. So it's goodbye, Mrs. Sullivan, right? Yes. Come on in, Phil. I'll get you that book. Let's see. I thought I had it somewhere here. Look, um, why don't I drop her off over at your place on the way back to the hospital, say, around, um, around 6.30? Great, thanks. Come on, cheer up. You know, they all gotta go sometime. Yeah, trouble is that we doctors are taught that we can save lives, and the only thing we can do, really, is to fight a rear guard action against death. Sooner or later, we have to lose. I never thought of it that way. <laughs> My father used to say, how nice it would be just once to be on the winning side. The winning side? The side of death. The object was to kill the patient. It'd be the only way you'd be reasonably sure of success. The winning side, huh? You better not let your patient see you talk that way. You can be sure of that. I'll see you later. We do keep meaning to have you over for dinner, Phil. Oh, it's okay. I guess your husband doesn't like the idea that we use the date, huh? Before she was married. Oh, I know. <laughs> well, that was a long time ago. You know what's funny about people you've grown up with? I sometimes get the feeling that we're all still kids just pretending to be grown up. You pretending to be a cop. Ron pretending to be a doctor. And you? Hmm. Pretending to be a woman, I guess. Oh, no, not you. Nobody could pretend that could, Lisa. You're nice. I'll see. He's such a nice man. I always thought you could have done a lot worse. I did. Your tests were negative, but the lab forgot to do a blood sugar, so while you're here, I'll need another sample. Be my guest. You sure you're not worried about my M.O.? Some dread poison on the needle or something like that? No, but perhaps you'd better know about my precautions. Oh, perhaps I should. It's my will. I've left instructions that there's to be an autopsy, no matter what. And they're to pay particular attention to the possible presence of any unusual drugs. My, my, my. You did all that, eh? If I do have a heart attack, Ron, it better be a legitimate one. Well, the police will know about it. So, I can no longer safely murder you. That's right. Hmm. Then I won't murder you. I was hoping you'd say that. Uh, you, uh, got me blocked. Well, any form of social protest is better than none, right? You mind moving it? I hate running into heroes. You're a funny cop, Phil. Like when Charlie Chaplin played Hitler. Hey, never. Huh? Go argue with the law. Romantic idea. Murder for love. If that's what it is. Is it Lisa you want, or just her inheritance? Is that the entire plot, that I kill you, marry her, and then kill her, too? You might. Oh, come on now, Frank. How many murders is that? Three in my past and two more on my schedule? It does seem like a lot. But we have nothing to worry about anymore, do we? We never did. Frank, would you mind if I took care of Fred Kramer first before we remove that cyst? No, if it doesn't take too long. Not at all. You can wait right in here. It must be particularly hard for a doctor. What must? Being backed into a corner. Why particularly a doctor? Oh, I don't know. You must all develop something of a sense of omnipotence if you don't start out with one. Scared, trusting people coming to you with their problems. You disposing of them with a quick scribble on your prescription pad. 
You all play God a little bit, don't you? Occupational hazard. But of course, we are called on to make life and death decisions sometimes. Not life and death, really. The patient's going to die anyway. A little sooner or a little later is all you decide. That's all God himself decides. Because while there's not much danger in it anymore, I had to be sure that hepatitis doesn't show up. That'd be from the needle, right? Your needle, not mine. How's it been going lately? Feel any impulse to get a fix? Uh, no, not since we started. Before, that was the scariest part. The, uh... Arrogant feeling that it's me. And that I have to have it. And I'll do anything to get it, you know? It's not typical of just the addict. That attitude is not unknown to the rest of us. I'm gonna give you a larger dose of the substitute this time. Make you a little drowsy. It might be better if you rested here a while before you went home. Anything you say. Feel anything yet? Uh huh. And I'll move around. Uh, do me a favor, will you? Go over and poke the fire for me a bit. Sure. frightened me most about getting the habit, vulnerability. An addict is like a sitting duck. Yeah. No. Well, put the poker back where you got it, please. Feeling it now? Man, it's... Oh, man, it's like I shut up with the real stuff, you know? Yeah, it will sometimes. Take Fred upstairs and let him stretch out for a while, huh? Oh, sure thing. Anybody else waiting out there for me? Uh, only Mrs. Manning. She's waiting for her husband. Frank, I'd wait. It distracts me to know that you're here. Don't you understand that? Well, I'll go if you insist. Yes, please. Go to Mario 
Let's have a drink. Think about us. I'm trying not to. Upset about Mrs. Sullivan. Never easy to lose a patient, sure. But you mustn't let it get you down. Yes, I suppose you're right. After all, I I have been on the winning side before. Well, of course you have. And I'll be on the winning side again. Had a boy. did survive. I want you to rest here for about 15 minutes or so, or my nurse will let you know when it's time for you to go home. You won't be here? No, I have to get back to the hospital. Make you feel safer? Now let me drive you away. Just yet. All finished, are we? Oh, Miss Regis, uh, let's see. Get Mr. Manning a glass of water, will you please, and see if he needs anything else? Of course. Fred's all right upstairs. You know, this might be a good time for you to go out and walk your dog. Oh, thanks for reminding me. Happy doesn't forgive easily. And when you get back, you can send them both home. Fine. Uh, 6.30. I'll be at Phil Proctor's and then at the hospital if you need me. Fine. Yes, Mummy's coming. Well, does he want to go out? Yes, Mommy, take it now. <laughs> me to show you?
That you, Miss Regis? No. Thought you'd left. I did, but I... I'd forgotten I had Fred Kramer resting upstairs and... just have to come back to let him go home. You won't forget about me, will you? No. Miss Regis will call you. Fred! Fred, it's all right for you to leave now. this way. Thanks. I hope you've given some thought to my suggestion. You're asking me to give up quite a lot, you know. This was my father's practice before it came to me. Before you bought it? Yes, I bought it, because I had to have it. And I was prepared to do anything to anybody in order to get it. This isn't a confession, is it? No, just quoting a patient. theory about that M.O. business of a criminal repeating his method? Mm -hmm. What about it? I don't think you can really count on it. Time. Perhaps I could go over that with you. Great, come on up. I spent most of my time in that darn medical dictionary. I have to keep cross-referencing terms and things. It's a little complicated for me. Come on, straight in here. 
Dr. Wellesley's office. Oh, hello, Meg. Oh, gee, I'm sorry. No, this is my night to work late at the office. What's playing? Oh, that's one of those arty things they make for the kids. Whoever can understand it. I don't think the kids can either. But they won't admit it, will they? No, I'm sorry. We'll have to make it another time. Okay, Meg. Bye-bye. Rise and shine, Mr. Manning. Mr. Manning, are you all right? condition. Well, I just said his head's all bashed in. I can barely get any pulse. You'll get a pulse. All right, I'll be right there. Someone attacked Frank Manning in my office. Fred's gone. He wasn't here when I came back. Never mind about that. Phone for an ambulance and blood. I think it's ABRH positive, but you better check first. Uh, yes, Doctor. I'll do it. I've got a phone in anyway.
ABRH positive is right. I'll see if I can give the doctor a hand. Bill's calling. I told you to call now. <laughs> Bert? Bill Proctor. I'm over at Doc Wellesley's. Looks like we've got a homicide here. Attempted, anyway. Yeah, get an ambulance over here right away and tell them we need plenty of type ABRH positive blood. And that... Hold it, women. Never mind about the blood. Dead, huh? Amazing how long he hung on. He's dead now. Okay, now, when would you say you last saw Manning alive? Just before I went over to your place. Well, if you really have to know, it was exactly 6.30. I heard the clock strike. 6.30, huh? Got to my place a couple minutes after that, so you wouldn't have time to do all this. <laughs> well, isn't that big of you? I saw him alive after the doctor did. Why don't you say I could have killed him? No, no, forget it. You bet forget it. Big question is, where's Fred Kramer? Uh, Miss Regis, it's not our business to cast suspicion. It's my business, Ron. What about Fred? Nothing about Fred. Oh, I'll get happy as milk. That usually quiets him down. Fred was here along with Manning, right? He comes here every day for treatment. He's on junk, isn't he? Now, why would you say that? Oh, come on, Ron. Nobody's gunning for anybody. I'm just reading what you can read for yourself. Somebody broke into your cabinet in there, got out a hypo and some of that dope there on the floor. Now, that spells junkie, doesn't it? It might. Chances are there's blood on him and he maybe even left his fingerprints. That's what's going to nail him, not anything you say. I'm sure you won't find any blood on Fred Kramer. Fine, great. I hope there isn't. Only he is on drugs, right? Was is the operative word. He's in the process of withdrawal. Okay. He was sedated shortly before I left. It's unlikely he'd commit a violent act. Is that clear? Yeah, Ron, right, sure. Bert, Bill Proctor. I want Fred Kramer picked up right away. Oh, come on now. Make it wanted for questioning in connection with a homicide, all right? Okay, Bert. <laughs> I don't believe you. I'm sorry, but it's true. He was murdered. Murdered? Oh. It happened right inside there. Ron, you didn't do it, did you? No, he was with me when it happened. Oh, thank you. It's going to be all right, Lisa. It's going to be all right. <laughs> Okay, he's not there, then look someplace else. A town this size, you couldn't lose a miniature poodle in for crying out loud, let alone a grown man. 
I know he's a fugitive, but there's only so many places he can hide. Now, come on, let's get on the ball. Hmm. Is anybody here? Call back later, I thought. Something here. In here, buddy. Oh, hi, Phil. Hey, listen. Uh, it's a question. M maybe you could help me with it. You think a dumb cop could help you? You said anything about that? I had an idea you weren't all that crazy about cops. Oh, well, nobody's real crazy about cops, Joe. No, you're, you're okay. Thanks a lot. What's the question? The question, right. Uh, hey, how can uh, somebody get blood all over them, you know, without, and, uh, not cut anywhere, you know? You got blood on you. Don't you remember what happened tonight? Uh -huh. Not to tell you the truth, not that much. You're high right now, aren't you? Well, it sure feels like it. That... But where could I gotten this stuff, you know? Fred, I'm going to tell you something. You have the constitutional right to remain silent. You also have the right to the services of a lawyer. Yeah, sure, OK. Sergeant, let's go. Oh, I'm going to take a ride. Maybe you'll remember something. You probably figure here's a cop who maybe resents you college kids and will have to nail you. It's not true. I honestly don't want it to be you. Believe that, please. Uh, Phil, what, what happened here? Somebody bashed in Frank Manning's head. He was murdered. Oh, no. I don't know. Fred! There's nothing to get excited about, Miss Regis. We're just questioning you. You go on home. All right. Only, Phil, take it easy, will you? You bet. Uh, Mrs. Manning's resting. We gave her a sedative. Tell you how it looks, Fred. Someone busted another cabinet here, got out the morphine and the needle. Manning was on the couch and surprised him. So he panicked, picked up the poker, and whack! Bashed in his head. Permitted? Mm. Whoever did, I had to get blood all over him, huh? Is that the way it happened, Fred? It, 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 could, a, could a guy do something like that and, and, you know, and not remember it? I mean... Well, well he had to forget it, because he couldn't stand to think about it. You don't know? All right, come on, take off your coat. Let me check you out. Come 
Oh, it's all right. Now, come on, brother, stop butting around. Don't give me this. I don't remember business. Nobody could do this and not remember something. Well, then maybe I didn't do it. I mean, I swear, Phil, I, I honestly swear that I wouldn't do anything. Don't swear. Just give me some explanation. Phil, stop it. Why are you doing this? You know this boy couldn't have killed Frank. I'm a cop, Lisa. All I'm allowed to know is evidence. Well, then get better evidence. Get the real killer. And just who is that, Lisa? I don't know that. How am I supposed to know that? You see, that's just the point. I'm supposed to know it. I'm, I'm sorry, Mrs. Mann. Really. Why? You didn't kill him, did you? No, I... I mean, I'm sorry he's dead. Thank you for that. We got fingerprints, there's blood all over him, and they're gonna match. There's no other way. The killer got morphine, and this kid's loaded with it. Come on. Do what you have to do, Phil. You're gonna have to live with it. Yeah, I know that. Charlie, take him down a book. What about you? Pick me up later. I wanna look around some more. Oh, Charlie. Yeah. yeah take this for you. It's evidence. Things just... Maybe it's too good. These things just don't work out that way. All wrapped up like that. These things just don't break that way. Not often they don't. He said he'd try to get a hold of him. Yeah, but did you tell him I need him? Yeah, I told him. I mean, I, I really need him, man. I mean, I really need him. Doctors are like what they say about us cops. Never around when you need them. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, sure. Thanks a lot. Dr. Wellesley. Oh, yes, Phil. Fred Graham. Well, I suppose you have to do what you think is right. What problem? Oh, I'm sure I gave you Manning's correct blood type. Well, the lab people can certainly check it from the body. And that certainly is odd. Well, I'd have those clods at the lab run the test again. Trouble at all. Bye. Samples were those. Whose blood? Doesn't matter. Well, I heard what you just said on the phone. Well, that was, uh, it was Phil Proctor out of the county lab. There's some sort of a mix-up out there. About blood samples, wasn't it?
Lisa, you shouldn't be sitting in this room at all, thinking morbid thoughts. Yes, I guess I was. Come on, come on. Let's go outside. The fresh air will be good for you. Okay. I don't know. I just can't help remembering how I spoke to you about it at the party, about killing him. Yes, but you were just joking, weren't you? Of course I was. You knew that. Yes, I knew that. Ron. On the phone, what did Phil say exactly? I suppose you'll find out about it eventually anyway. They couldn't get the blood on Fred Kramer's coat to match up with your husband's. You know, I've been sitting there ever since they arrested that kid. I, I just couldn't believe he could do it. Ron. Yes? Did you have anything to do with Frank's death? You mean, did I kill him? The mix-up about the blood, what does that mean, really? Most likely some lab technician got a hold of a wrong sample to test. They're uh, checking it now. It could mean something else. What? Well, it could mean that... you made a mistake. That you put the blood on Fred Framer's coat and that you got the wrong bottle by mistake. No, it doesn't mean that. That's good. But you poured out the blood the minute you heard. You do think I killed him, don't you? I don't know, Ron. I just don't know. My poor darling. You know more than you should. But not as much as you must. If we're to go on together. We are going to go on together, aren't we, Lisa? Of course, darling. But we can't have this doubt standing between us, can we? Ron, just tell me you didn't kill him. I can't tell you that. Because I did kill him, Lisa. I killed him, Lisa. I killed him. Understand, I did it for us. Oh. Oh. Somebody in the house. you believe it? I was so upset, I forgot to take the samples to the lab. Well, there, there are no blood samples today. There are always blood samples. Uh, weren't you going to do a blood sugar on Mr. Manning? Oh, I guess that doesn't make much difference now, does it? Not much. You all right, Doctor? Yes, yes, I'm fine, thank you. You're sure? Yes, yes, it's just fine. Miss Regis, why don't you leave those things and then go on home and get some rest? Well, maybe I'd better. You know, I was wondering, how will our other patients feel about this murder? I mean, will a thing like this hurt our business? Go home, will you, Miss Regis? I guess you think I've wigged out, huh? You may have a point there. Well, uh, you know who would have gotten a kick out of this. Your father. Good night, Miss Regis. Have a good night. Thank you. 
You too. You really killed him. That's right. That's right, Ron. We say the words, but I, I, I just can't take them in. Darling. Darling, we talked about miracles, didn't we? Well, miracles just don't happen. We must make them happen. I did it so we could be together, Lisa. Frank died so that we could be together. Just you and I, Lisa. Just you and I. Maybe. Maybe the three of us. Maybe you and I. And the ghost of Frank. Maybe, maybe we'll think of Fred every once in a while, too. You won't be able to forget, will you? I, I don't think so, Ron. Would you tell the police what I just told you? I don't know. I hadn't thought about that. That's the problem now, isn't it? Ron, suddenly I'm afraid of you. You should be. What are you going to do? I'm sorry, Lisa, but you're going to have a heart attack. You're going to kill me? I have no choice, have I? None of us have, really. We're all programmed one way or another. We react when you push the right buttons. You can't hope to get away with it. Not two people in two days. Oh, I'll get away with it. I always have. Always? It's quite painless, Lisa. I promise you that. Just one small injection, and then you black out, and that's it. No one will believe that I've had a heart attack. A grieving widow? You won't be the first to go that way. Particularly when you've had a history of a bad heart. You've always said my, my heart is in fine condition. It's not what your records show. See, the endless advantages to being a doctor, Lisa. There's several bad EKGs in your file. Well, they're not mine. They have your name on them. Ron, am I supposed to just stay here and let you do it? I think it'd be best, Lisa. Because if you struggle, I'll just have to put you under restraints. Somebody might come by. Phil said he might come back. Phil, oh, he's a half hour away at the county lab. I won't take nearly that time. I'm sorry, Lisa. It's the only solution. Why? Self-preservation? I must survive, Lisa. I must. Ron, please. Dr. Wellesley, see me. Help me! Help me! Please help me! Oh, Mrs. Manning, are, are you all right? I, I'm sorry, Mr. Collins, something's happened to Mrs. Manning. I believe she's having a heart attack. I'll call you right back. There really isn't any help, is there? No, I, I suppose not. It'd be better for both of us if you don't struggle. Yes. If you go for quickly, you'll see. Yes. Come on now. Let me have your arm. Let me have your arm. Charlie, you out there? Right here, Lieutenant. Come on, give me the key, Ron. Come on. Welcome, Charlie. You were out there all that time? Most of the time. I called you from my house. Of course, that blood on Fred Kramer's coat, that did match, didn't it? You know it did. You had it worked out about perfect, Ron. Let's go. 
the shoot and let Fred Kramer go. All right. Be sure he gets to see a doctor. All right. Yeah. Let's get out of this room. Sure. You certainly took your time about coming in. Had to let him make his move. Do you know he almost killed me? He didn't kill you, honey. What he did was kill your husband, remember? That's right. That's what he did, the good doctor. He did just that, didn't he? Like the man said, he was programmed. All we had to do was push the right buttons. Like a loaded revolver just waiting to be pointed at somebody. Now you're quoting yourself. I'm entitled. It was trickier than I thought. But from the time I fed your husband all that info about Jaeger's town, it worked out the way I said, right? Know something? For a dumb cop, you're pretty clever, darling. Like the man said, doll, it was for us. Wrong, baby. It was for me. You mean without me? Definitely without you. No way. You didn't think it through. You wouldn't. Count on it. It's no kick for me, but it's you and me the rest of the way, right? You and me. Forever. <laughs>